Evening all and welcome to a very simple tutorial on how to extract a set number of items from a storage and then have the grabber disable itself so no further items come through until you reset it and let it go again. To do this you're going to need access to the compute blocks because we're going to be using uh, the agent triggers, the uh, logic set blocks, the counter blocks so you need access, you need to have that unlocked. Uh, I've got here a very simple setup of a, a forester just outputting logs into a barn and then uh, a grabber to another barn and then that barn will go to avoid obelisk so what we want to do is we want to set up a way so that we can have the grabber enable a certain amount of goods to come out and then after we hit that number the grabber will disable itself so to do that is going to be quite simple so first grab the agent trigger and you need to place that down on the chute or conveyor belt or whichever uh, exit you have coming from uh, one inventory to another one uh, the closer you put it to the grabber the better really because the further away you do uh, it counts as additional spaces or additional items that will go through uh, so from the agent trigger we also want a counter block it's nearby the counter block does exactly what it says on the tin it just counts up every time it receives a signal um, and then next to the counter block we want a math block and we want this math block to be set to whatever threshold you want so you want to set the math function to uh, uh, less than And you want to set the value uh, if i rotate them around that will help so you can see what's going on there um and the value you want to set to whatever number you want to extract from there minus the distance the agent trigger is from the grabber so right now the agent trigger is one away so if you want to extract 10 items we want to set this to nine and that's important because obviously the grabber outputs an item then it hits the agent trigger so there's already one item on your chute or belt or whatever so you need to make sure you take one away from that so then we just grab the agent trigger and right click on the counter block so we connect a logic link there get the counter block link it to the math block and then the math block link to the grabber nice and simple now if you hold control on the keyboard and click on the grabber it will start going through and you'll see it'll get to 10 and it'll stop and we had 10 items go into the barn and uh oh, they've all gone off to be be voided which is fine uh, i rotated that the right way so now if you want to do this again what you're going to have to do is reset the counter block back to zero because there's you, it doesn't reset so you have to reset it back to zero yourself and you'd have to turn the grabber up again and you see it all starts going again nice and easy so you reset the grabber back to 10 back to zero and it goes to transport 10 goods there but you can also do this through logic for a very simple way so if you were to grab a logic pusher block a number block and a logic set block now these ones are very interesting. We'll start with the set block. Uh, the set block basically takes in a number and will transmit that number to other blocks. So in our case, we want to take the logic set block and we want to connect it to our counter block because we want to set the number on the counter block to whatever number we want. We want to grab a number block. Now, a number block is slightly different to a counter block. A number block doesn't um, count up every time it receives a signal. It just takes whatever signal it comes in and makes that its number inside so if it was to receive a signal it would receive a one if it was to receive a negative symbol uh, it would receive a true signal it goes one if it receives a negative symbol it receives zero so uh, the number block it doesn't work like the counter block but we want it to just be a number block because we want it to be zero so we connect that to the, the logic block we also want to connect to this to the math block now that's important because when you use the logic pusher block, which is the final block we're going to put down here, um, that will push a signal through the number block. So we connect that to the number block and that will push the signal through the number block and it will cause the logic set block to set the counter to zero. But because it's setting the counter rather than triggering it, that doesn't cause the math block to activate. So then the grabber will not enable. But if you set the number block to also connect to the math block, the math block will receive a zero and go, hey, that was less than nine. So I'll enable and I will go. So let me just go over what we've got here. We have a logic pusher block connected to a number block set to zero. The number block is connected to a logic set block and it's connected to our previous math block. And the logic set block is connected to our counter block. Now, if we hold control to activate and we just click on the pusher block, it will go it will go 10 items it will stop and we have another 10 items there and then you just click this again hold control click and away it goes and it works over and over again 
So what if you wanted to have this logic pusher block trigger based on the inventory of another storage? So say for instance, this barn was to drop below 50, we wanted this to trigger, send 10 and do no more. Now, really the easiest way to do that would be to read the inventory of the storage. It could be a building that say needs 10 logs for a recipe, whichever. Um, it would be easier to just read it using an inventory sensor and a math block and say, hey, if it's below a certain number, turn on the grabber. But if you only want to send 10 items down the loop, uh, particularly if it wasn't this close, if it was quite far away, um, you could possibly do that. The easiest way is to use an inventory center, a math block, and the if block. Now the if block is a, a fairly new block and it's a quite useful one. Only sends a signal forward if it receives a value that is one or zero. So one is true, zero is, is a, Sorry, zero is true. Uh, what is true? Zero is false. All right. Now, if we connect the inventory sensor to the uh, barn by right clicking on it, and then we want to have this set to, we'll say, less than 50, because we currently have 53 in here. So we'll set this to less than 50 as a, as a test. Inventory sensor to math block, math block to if block, and then the if block can go to the logic pusher. Now, if the barn drops below 50, it will trigger the logic pusher to um to activate there is a small issue with this and that is the delay between the time getting from this barn to that barn so it may trigger it more than once which is obviously a bit of a problem uh you could have a little bit of redundancy here saying hey if we drop below 50 then well in our case we're trying to grab her but if it's a building that's using goods you can really do that so let me just show the example here. If we turn on the grabber here, we'll drop below 50. This will trigger and it will activate this to output goods. And we see this gets above 50 and goes and is now outputting. Uh, but you will notice the logic pusher fired a couple of times. It fired at least two or three times before it went. So it sent definitely sent more than 10 goods. So one, two, three. It fired three times. So technically it reset the counter block to zero three times, which means it should have sent 13 goods. So, um, but you can see every time we drop below 50, it is re-triggering and sending the goods off. So, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I'll just go over the logic once more here. So we have an agent trigger on the output line from the main storage going to a counter block. The counter block is connected to a math block and the it is set to a less than one minus the value you want because the distance away from the uh, output is one. So if we want 10, we've got the set to nine and this math block is connected to a grabber. So when the agent trigger receives a block underneath, it starts counting up. When the counter block re re uh, reaches 10, it's no longer less than nine, so therefore it closes down the grabber. Uh, you could set this to less than or equal to 10 as well, that would probably work as well, but I'll leave it less than nine. Uh, the reset system, we have a logic pusher block pushing into a number block set to zero, and we've set to zero because we wanna set the counter block to zero. The number block is connected to a logic set block and that logic set block is connected to the counter block so when it triggers it resets the counter block to zero the number block is also connected to our original math block just so it sends a zero signal to it so the math block knows everything's been reset and i have to turn the grabber on at the other storage we have an inventory center uh, connected to the storage and then a logic link from that connected to the math block the math block is set to whichever value you want um, once it reaches, um, so we've got less than 50, once it reaches less than 50, it will trigger and the if block will receive a one statement. Because it receives a true, which is one, it will send the signal on to our logic pusher, which triggers the whole event. And uh, that is basically it. I hope that has been quite useful to you. Uh, you can obviously set these numbers to whatever you want to, to, you know, if you want to send 50 goods, if you want to send however many goods, you do kind of need to do it per item you can't have multiple items come out of a barn multiple different items and um, because it would just the agent trigger just reads each one you can filter the agent trigger so if you only wanted it to read wood and didn't want it to read say you had carrots in here as well it wouldn't read the carrots it would just read the wood um, but then you've got multiple things on the same line not really designed for that but hopefully that all makes sense and uh hopefully it's been useful to you so thanks for watching and until then until next time have fun